can definitely now with this 416 thing or where I'm at just as a, as a writer or as an artist, I can go wherever I want to go and nobody can tell me, hey man, well, we don't dig that or it's not really going to fit what we do. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's going to fit what we do because we're going to do it. <laughs> and that's it, right? This is what we do. Like, who says we can't be this? I'm Brent Lenny and I'm an artist. Ultimately, I wanted to have that positive impact in people's lives through music. Because music was that thing when I was, I don't know, I remember picking up over and over and playing records, you know, that I would get, my brother would have stuffed behind the stereo or something, behind my dad's records or something, and I'd be like, oh, what's this? And I'd put it on and I'd play that record over and over. And certain songs, I'd be like, oh my God. I mean, all by myself by Eric Carmen. I kept just putting that needle over and over and I'm like, oh my God, this song. <laughs> like, you know, what is this guy? He, he's tortured this guy, man. And, and he just kept singing it with so much passion. I'm like, oh my God, I want to cry. But it, in, in feeling that emotion, I was feeling really happy because it was just so powerful. And I kept playing that over and over. And then I'd look at other stuff and I'd be like, oh, what's this, Pink Floyd? I'm like, I don't know. Not, not for me right now, it's too weird. Eventually though, I would be like, oh my God, Pink Floyd, one of my favorite bands are here wearing their shirt. It's one of my favorite bands ever, but I wasn't ready for it then. I was too young, I couldn't understand it. Um, but music has always been that one thing where I feel like if I'm ever going to express myself and who I am and what I feel and the message I want to convey to people or I want to sell to people, not even sell, it's a horrible word, but the message I want to pass on to people is going to be through music. And so at an early age, probably 12, 13, I was like, okay, this is, this is definitely all I want to do. And I remember my dad getting mad at me once because I did really bad at school one year and he didn't speak to me for like a week, which was insane because he was the most upbeat happy guy ever they'd be like hey dad the world's about to explode and we're all gonna die like, hey that's great you know, it's just like he always saw the positive in everything and the fact you know that maybe you know, he didn't talk to me for like a, you know, a few days anyway i was like crushed i'm like oh my god i'm really disappointed this man and that was devastating and that was that was like okay but i also think to them they saw this kid really wants this. This is something that we, it's consuming to him and who are we to ever say otherwise. Music was just all my focus at that point. And I didn't really see much purpose in anything else. So I think I just kind of half-hearted everything because I was like, oh man, I'm just, I'm on a track. Oddly enough, that was like in high school, I still went through and finished university and it's like, no, I'll be practical about this. I, mean, <laughs> I think they instilled that practicality in me, uh, my parents, both especially my mom, where it's like, no, no, you need, you know, and I'm like, yeah, maybe you're right. I'm traveling late because my man has gone and from now six is what I'm doing right now and it that's just a name for what this thing is that I'm doing and I don't even really know what it is that I'm doing all I know is that I'm writing songs and I'm recording songs for the sake of just that and that's why it's important to me because I don't have agendas I don't have any pretense there's nothing that I'm setting out to do other than to write songs that mean something that are authentic and if they don't mean something I'm moving on. And 
it was meant to encompass everything. The name 416 kind of means the area code for Toronto, obviously, and I wanted to embrace everybody that I know who are musicians to come out and sit in and play. Every show is going to be different. Um, over time, obviously, some guys are going to play more often than others, and now it seems like 416 is kind of a band, and that's really cool. And uh, But every show is going to be different. Could be one guy playing with me, could be three guys playing with me, could be five guys playing with me, could be me just doing my own thing. And that's a really good place to be because I like the excitement of not knowing what's going to happen. Every show is going to be different, every night's going to be different, there's going to be different people, the interpretations of the songs are going to be different, they're never going to be played the same way. And how much more exciting can that get? And I think that that authenticity is what people pick up on when they come and see us play because they can see that, wow, these guys are kind of flying by the seat of their pants. <laughs> and uh, it's real. It's just real as if we're in a rehearsal room playing. I mean, clearly we're rehearsed, but it's still, we're still going, oh, wow, what just happened? Well, that was kind of neat. Hey, I, did, I didn't, hey, did you just think of that? And uh, you just plow on. And that's the beauty of, of doing something that is true. And honest. Open your heart for the space invader, then it's straight to hell in a red elevator. Birds sing songs for tameless souls, dreaming of a life the one will never know. Gotta hand it to you, you really are done. I guess it's all what you're trying to get out of it, what you're trying to accomplish. And if it's a matter of, well, I just want success and I want to be a pop star, then do what you feel you need to do. Now, to me, it's about making something that I feel is challenging uh, creatively, something that's going to just cause a response in somebody other than it just being a sugar-flavored donut that you eat and in you know, three minutes it's gone until you listen to it again. It's like a movie. You want to walk out of the theater and you want, to, you want to have to think about it. You want the next day to wake up and still kind of maybe still be thinking about it or feeling it. everything in place, everything was going really well, and it felt like this is it. Because it was so close and things were just moving in that direction that you always believed in that it was going to move. And then suddenly the wheels fall off, you know? And it's, it's not even due to what you're doing, it's those who surround you that things just kind of, you know, some sort of collapse. Uh, and after that kind of just died a painful death, it was like, I don't want to do any of this anymore. I could, don't want that again. As much as I loved it and gave bled for that, I don't want that anymore. So what am I going to do now? I didn't want to do anything. I just, I didn't, I put the guitar in, 
in the case and stuck it under the couch. And I said, I don't want to see you for ever. <laughs> and then one day, as you know, as an artist, you can't, you can't help it. You just, it, whether you want to walk away from it or not, it's never going to leave you. And that's kind of what happened. I picked up the guitar, I wrote a song and I was like, wow, this is really good because it was the most honest thing I'd written in a long time. I wasn't writing with the purpose of selling it to other guys in a band. I wasn't writing it to sell it as a single. I wasn't writing it because it had to be something. I wrote it because it meant something. It came from somewhere and it had to get out. And I was like, this feels really good. Let's do some more of this. And um, that's how it started. And then it just kept rolling and rolling and that's how it goes. So 416 definitely was a reset, and I think a much needed one. Uh, a teacher, oddly, that question is the same person, if it's a teacher or a person, because my father was a teacher uh, for many, many years. And he was also, he, I'd say he's the biggest male influence, maybe just period, the biggest influence in my life. I mean. I don't know how to describe my dad because he's, um, he was just, he never said, oh no, you shouldn't do that, or never discouraging. Everything, every thought that came out of your head, he would listen to, and he, 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 it was almost like he was thinking about it himself, right? But it was encouraging in a way that uh, I was never held back from dreaming. And I might have been the only one in my family out of my siblings and there were four of us that really kind of chased that dream uh and they're all you know i, I love my brother and sisters I, let me do that again because i have two brothers and a sister but i uh i love my brothers and my sister i mean they're, they're great people they truly are wonderful people and i think they all live a happy life um but yeah, I think and we'd all we all agree that our father was uh, the most influential person in our life in that sense that he was he was just encouraging in a, in a way that um, wasn't obvious. Like he'd never say, "Oh, you should go do that." I mean, he would sometimes, but he'd be like, "Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Sure, there's nothing you can't do." But I mean, this is a man who, you know, was in the seminary for 10 years. He was two months away from being ordained as a Catholic priest. And, you know, he, he backed out because he just realized, uh, I want more in life. I want a family. And I admire him for, for doing that, for saying, you know what? I, I, this is what I really want. I feel like there's more purpose in my life than this. And he did it. And he, did, he taught school for 40 years. And I'll tell you, my whole life was... Oh, your father was the best teacher I ever had. And uh, and I'd be like, yeah, well, he teaches us every day at home, too, how to be a person and how to live life. And and uh, I I couldn't ask for more than that. And, my, you know, I, and by me saying all this, I feel like I'm discounting my mother, but she was the one who held that house together. And she's, you know, and that's often the case of mothers, is they really are the ones who, who you know, send you off to school every day and welcome you home and put the food in your belly and take care of you. And, and uh, it was a great, great combination for sure. That sounded good. I got you some, 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 I I had the smallest little demo Sean and I started, and yeah. I gave it to, uh, to Mike. He's yeah, like, yeah. oh no, I didn't. Like when we're into the bridge, when the, the first one, you know, I can't hear a word. 
They all make every day worth living. And then my, you know, my family growing up, my parents and my brothers and sister, they, um, they shape who you are. They shape your outlook on life. And maybe, you know, we're ultimately good people, you know, that believe in, you know, morals and ethics and are true to one another and that kind of thing. I mean, and I've been blessed that way to have those kind of friends in my life that are still friends since I was six years old to, to now, my best friends. And then the people I've met, you know, I picked up my whole life and moved to Toronto to chase this dream. And the people I've met since I've been here that are in my life on a regular basis, a daily basis, weekly basis, whatever it is, those people have really meant a lot to me, you know, and influenced me in ways that I never thought, right? I mean, that's, that's ultimately what you want an important person in your life to be is to influence you somehow, some way, whether you realize it or not. And then, you know, you can always step back and, and start to measure out your friendships with people and go, this person I like in my life because, you know what, they make me a better person. Mm -hmm. They make me look at things differently that maybe I wouldn't really look at them and go, oh yeah, that's true. They open my mind. They make me see things in different ways. And, um, those are the kind of people that I value in my life that can maybe uh, impact my life in a way, whether it's subtle or it's obvious or extreme. Um, you know, like my wife has done that. The boys have done that. My daughter's done that. They all make you look at life in a way that you go, okay, you know what? I never quite looked at it like that. And that's the point of life anyways. Every day I should be learning something. I should be experiencing something I haven't yesterday. The day before that and maybe tomorrow. It's like every day when I put my head to the pillow, I want to know that did, what I ask myself literally, what did I get out of today? I might have worked all day at a job I didn't really want to work at. But, you know, this evening I got to do this. And even at work today, I did, I did you know, meet that person and they said something to me that was kind of unique. Or I went to the studio and I was like, oh man, that was a cool experience. I never, I never never knew that. Or, oh, I was neat. I learned something tonight. Or I read CNN and I was like, hey man, that was interesting. It doesn't matter what it is or how small it is. Every day I want to feel like I'm taking something away from this because it's never coming back. I'm never going to get it back. I'm not going to get the 30 seconds back that I, when I started this little speech. I want to know that I'm getting something out of life every day. Well, it's definitely changed because I don't have to have, I'm not, I don't feel like I need to fit it in a box. And I mean, with the Apollo effect, I mean, you can listen to an album and hear 10 or 12 songs that are completely different. I mean, maybe one or two sound similar, same kind of style, but everything's gonna have a different, but that's just who I am as a person. I mean, I mean, we all say, oh, I love music and I listen to everything. And people say that, it's like, well, every artist you're naming is the same genre. Yeah, it's different, but it's the same genre. Where I, I just feel like I grew up listening to certain things with my dad when I was young, you know, listening to the crooners like, you know, Andy Williams and Perry Como and Bing Crosby. And then you get to that age in your life where you gravitate towards what it is that you love. It's a pop music or a rock music. And then as you mature a little bit, you get into stuff like jazz or blues and you're like, oh man, I never... Wow, I always hated that when I was a kid, but now that I'm a little, now all of a sudden you're, you're digging it. Like, I hated these guys, but now I love these guys. I love this soul. I love R&B. I love, where did, why did I ignore this when I was younger? Why was I so turned off from it? So, yeah, like writing songs now, I feel like, hey, if I'm listening to Marvin Gaye, what's going on? I'm, I'm inspired by that. I'm gonna write something like that because man, this is, it's just, it's filling up this cup that's inside you that, you know, some days it's empty and some days it's just 
flowing over. And, and so like, if, if I'm listening to that and it's really just hitting my soul, I'm going to end up writing something like that. But then another day I'll put on filter and I'll be like, man, I just I really want to rip something up. You know, I just really want to write something that rocks the hell out of this place. You know, so and then, you know, I'll listen to something that's maybe more ambient. And I'm like, oh, God, that is so why is that taking me this place? Why am I going somewhere with this? Like, I wasn't expecting this, but it, it's so amazing. And then you take something else that's psychedelic and you're like, oh, that is so cool. So I can definitely now with this 416 thing or where I'm at just as a, as a writer or as an artist, I can go wherever I want to go and nobody can tell me, hey man, well, we don't dig that or it's not really going to fit what we do. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's going to fit what we do because we're going to do it. <laughs> and that's it, right? This is what we do. Like, who says we can't be this? Who says we can't be that? My life walks in hand with your blessing As the shadow of winter reflects in my heart And some distant reminders play like a song I I'm Brent Lunny, and I'm an artist.